outrage after an 81 year old homeowner shoots and kills an uber driver who came to his door to pick up a package the homeowner thought that the uber driver was part of a scam that was threatening his family and the tragedy ensued is it murder what about uber's responsibility and what about the scammers who set this horrific event into motion let's discuss i'm dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for palm beach county AK, the Florida lawman here on True Crime MTN. We appreciate all your likes and your comments, and you got us over 30,000 subscribers, so thank you. And this case in particular has attracted a lot of attention and horror, and rightly so. Lolita Hall, an Uber driver, was just picking up a package, and she went to this home of William Brock, an 81-year-old, sat there, waited for him to come out. He didn't, so she went up to his door. He came out with a gun, and he refused to let her leave, and he demanded her phone. He thought that she was part of the scam. See, he was being scanned by uh, these individuals who called him, either pretending to be his nephew, who was in dire straits and needed money, or pretended to have something to do with uh, his nephew being in dire straits. And so they wanted $12,000. They threatened him and his family if he didn't pay up, and then... They called Uber, and Uber doesn't ask too many questions and just sent a driver over to pick up the package. Well, when Miss Hall went to pick up the package, the homeowner, William Brock, 81 years old, thought she was in on it, didn't even know what Uber was, kept saying, who do you work for? She kept saying Uber. He didn't seem to understand. He demanded her phone. She refused to give him the phone. She said she'll call 911. Then he shot her, shot her in the leg. And then she's pleading for her life and pleading for him not to shoot her again. And then after she doesn't give up her phone and perhaps there was a brief scuffle, he shot her two more times. And so even if you want to say that the first shot was more of a manslaughter, not a murder because he was in, in incredible stress and thinking uh, that the person at his door was there to harm him, you don't get the second and third shots. Those second and third shots, to me, should be charged as murder. So even if you're going to downfile it on the first shot, the, the second and third shot, when she's pleading with her life, when she's not a threat to him, that does appear to be murder. And if he's going to come up with a self-defense claim, it's not going to work because Miss Hall was not posing any threat to him. Uh, she didn't have a weapon. He was not in imminent, reasonable fear of his life. Now, his best defense could be that he had diminished capacity, that uh, he wasn't in his right mind, and perhaps it's a lesser offense than murder. He didn't meet the elements of murder, but I still don't see how he gets around that when he clearly looked from the video to be someone who had his faculties. In fact, he was asking who she worked for. He was not giving her money as part of the scam. He was able to figure out that this was a scam and he was demanding that she turn over information on her employer, not knowing what Uber is. And he never called police, never uh, told the authorities until after he shot her and she was bleeding to death. That's when he called 911. So uh, this is ugly all around and prosecutors, I think, are doing the right thing here. But there are a lot of questions about Uber's involvement. And also, what about the scammer? Well, Uber is not going to be involved criminally, but civilly, I think they're certain to be sued here because they don't seem to have the kind of know your customer rules and regulations that other carriers have, where this kind of scam seems to proliferate with Uber. As a prosecutor, I've seen this in other cases where Uber drivers are not part of the scam. They just go and they pick up these packages and at some point a tragedy was going to occur and it has and so yeah i do think that uber is going to face civil liability especially because when it comes to civil liability you don't need to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt it's just by preponderance of the evidence is it more likely than not that they committed a tort that they did a wrong whether it's negligence or something else so i think that 
uh, they're going to be in a bit of trouble here. Maybe this is finally what gets them to change their policies and start you know, requiring more information from the people who hire them to pick up packages. Now, as far as the scammers, that's a little more interesting because they're going to face criminal liability here. But what about murder? What about manslaughter? I, I don't see them being charged with it. I see them being charged with extortion and with uh, making uh, deception by phone. You know, there's some uh, fraud statutes where if you have interstate communications, that's a crime. And who knows where these people are? These people could be overseas. They could be in Canada. We don't know. But this scam took place in that community in Ohio. They could be charged there if they're ever found. They could be charged by the state officials or federal officials. But as far as whether they'll be charged with murder, it's more difficult. There is a felony murder statute on the books in Ohio, and that felony murder statute has been used against Mr. Brock, the homeowner, where if you're committing a felony, a first or second degree felony involving violence, and a death occurs, well then, it's murder. And he's being charged with two counts of felony murder in addition to the murder charge that I've previously mentioned. But what about the scammers? Could they be charged? Because they could be guilty of extortion. But the thing is, under Ohio law, it has to be a crime of violence. Now, is this a crime of violence? It's, it's a tough one. Is it foreseeable that something like this could happen? Sure, but they themselves did not commit the crime of violence. And maybe the prosecutors will try to fit it in there, but you have to have a first or second degree felony. That's the underlying crime. And the felony here could be extortion. And extortion is a third degree felony in Ohio. Let's look at the statutes. Under Ohio law, section 2903.02, it says, under subsection B, no person shall cause the death of another as a proximate result of the offenders committing or attempting to commit an offense of violence that is a felony of the first or second degree that is not a violation of these other sections that are, that's manslaughter they're referring to. So that's the felony murder rule. And then you say, okay, well, is this a first or second degree felony? Well, if it's extortion, it is not. It's extortion under section 2905.11 in Ohio law says that extortion is a third degree felony under their uh, subsection 5B. So if they're going to, in Ohio, charge the scammers, if they're ever caught, with the crime of murder or something really serious, they're gonna have to find a different statute to come under because extortion will just get them only so far. But maybe there's something else that rises to the level of first or second degree felony with violence, because violence did take place, although it's gonna be difficult for prosecutors. So there won't be perfect justice here because the scammers are the ones that put this in motion. They're the ones who seem to get away with it all the time because they're rarely caught. But something tells me that the feds are gonna use their advanced technology that's expensive, that's rarely used in cases like this, except because there is a death and because there's national outrage about this case. I suspect those scammers, mm -mm, their days are number. Unfortunately, there are a lot more to replace them. This, this type of scam happens all the time. Uh, we see this all the time and rarely they get caught because they can spoof their phone numbers. They can hide behind what's called cutouts in the United States, either people who are cooperating with them or people who are unknowing uh, helping them, like the Uber driver. Ms. Hall had no idea. She was part of the scam too. She got a scam call too by telling her to go to this house. And it's, uh, it's a real tragedy what occurred, uh, and especially because you have an 81-year-old man who no matter what happens here, He's going to be done, I think, for life, even if he gets a lesser charge. And look, he should face accountability because he had no reason to introduce a gun into this situation. And when he saw a person who was walking away, trying to avoid the conflict, who didn't have a weapon, who was pleading for her life, no, you don't get to shoot that person dead because you think that person is part of a scam. No. So that's the latest in this case. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, State Attorney for Palm Beach County, aka the Florida Lawman, here on True Crime MTN. I'll see you next time.